From Durant, Oklahoma, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning, I'm Joey McWilliams. Midwest Sports Saturday presented this week by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. Take a chance. Meet with some employers who are hiring. Bring resumes and be prepared for on-site interviews. That's at the Choctaw Career Expo. Discover future career opportunities right here in southeastern Oklahoma. For more information, visit ChoctawCareers.com slash expo. Well, it is a beautiful day today, and the sun is behind some clouds right now. That's all right, because that means it's quote-unquote football weather. I've heard that many, many times this week, because it's gotten to be a little bit cooler, so it feels like it's football season right now. Big game on tap here at Paul Laird Field, as the Northwestern Rangers are in Durant to take on the Southeastern Savage Storm. It's Midwest Sports Saturday, and we are really, really excited to be here again on the campus of Paul Laird Field. Joining me today is Jay Lindley. He is the voice of the Southeastern Savage Storm, the voice of the Southeastern Sports Sports Network. He's just the voice. Uh, I don't know about that. It's a gravelly <laughs> voice. It's a voice. I'll say that. It's a voice. Well, listen, let's talk some football then since I have you here, and thanks for, for joining me. And uh, Some of you may have heard my voice and his next to one another a few times. We've had a chance to work together over the years, a couple of seasons on a Southeastern broadcast or two, football, basketball, and, and beyond. But we're talking football right now. Storm getting ready as they come off a win last week. Two and two now on the season. Won the opener, dropped a, a couple of games, and then get the win last week. I talk about that win. That there were some delays and maybe stops and starts, but uh, Storm come out victorious. Well, the, the one thing that hasn't stopped this season is the defense. Uh, despite the two losses, and you go back to last week, you had the thirty-minute uh, lightning delay. It didn't throw off the defense at all, obviously allowing just seven points, but it's more than just that. Uh, there are positives and takeaways for now a, a fifth straight year under defensive coordinator Charlie Burks. And the defense right now, they seem to be, as, as long as I've been around the university now for you know, nearly two decades, this linebacking core may be the best they've had in a decade. I'll go out on a limb and say that. They're really, really talented with guys like S.J. Luavasanga, uh, Zach Scott, uh, and, and Connor Swope, a guy that's kind of underrated, a redshirt freshman, but right now leading the team in tackles. Well, when the defense plays well, I mean, that, that has to bode well for the entire team. Southeastern, under Coach Bo Atterbury, now in his fifth season with the program, Southeastern's had a winning record each of his past four seasons, and so the defense, he's a defensive guy too. So you have to think they're probably going to do well on that side of the ball. Well, it's funny you mentioned that about uh, Coach Atterbury. One of the things that they've touted uh, in recent years, winningest uh, Division II football program in the state over the last four seasons, and, and no – reason to not expect that to continue now with that being said coach Atterbury says it all the time in our coaches shows interviews this conference very evenly matched you can be snake bitten on any given day <laughs> southeastern was a few weeks ago against oklahoma baptist a team that they hadn't lost to at least since oklahoma baptist became a member of division two football and so with that it's a very even conference kind of like you know think of like the nfl i mean there's a lot of parity in this conference few guys are ahead of the pack, obviously, uh, people like Southern Arkansas, Harding, and Washita, but everyone else is fairly evenly matched. And Northwestern played within two touchdowns of that Southern Arkansas team, and I know we'll talk about this a little bit later on, the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Right now, at 4-0, and has Southern Arkansas at the top of, of the Midwest region. But going back to Southeastern then, of course, you know, it the – the defense has done its job. The offense putting up around 25 points a game. So I have to think maybe they, they, they want to put a few more points on the board. How does the offense look, and, and uh, what should someone expect to see today? Well, the one thing that's going to have to happen for the offense, to be honest, is you know, they rely heavily on the run game. One of the things that's been a problem is depth. Uh, one of their backup tailbacks, uh, C.J. Shavers, a transfer in. Uh, hurt early in the season we expect him back today that'll add a little depth to the running back core should help out uh, Kenneth Burks find a little running room there have been some injuries along the offensive line they have to get the passing game going because obviously people are keying in on guys like Burks and and, and that's going to be a challenge and it'll be a challenge today because uh, this week, new starter at quarterback, interestingly enough, Rollin Kinsall, who last week, or last year started for three games, had the road win over Washita, which was a huge win. His last start of the season 
was against Northwestern. Interestingly enough, it's his first start this season. <laughs> Austin Skinner uh, nicked up a little bit last week. Probable, uh, maybe he may get a series or two just to kind of check him out. Nothing uh, really damaging, but Kinsaw will get the start today. It'll be interesting to see how offensive coordinator Chad Spear handles that. Does he change the play calling, or, or I should say the approach to calling the game, or does he keep it uh, a little bit more, I guess you could say, light, so to speak, with Kinsaw coming in? What does Kinsaw then bring that, that may be the same or may be different than what a Skinner brings out to the field? The, the one thing, really, they're, they're, they're kind of mirrored. I mean, if you look at their numbers, especially if you look at last year's numbers, quarterback rating, all that stuff was, was very, very similar. I think Kinsaw may provide a, a little more flash. Of course, you say that, and then you look at Austin Skinner. You know, last week he had a 25-yard uh, run, or two weeks ago had a 25-yard touchdown run. So it's kind of difficult to say. It'll be interesting to see, though, how the receivers react. This is a, an undersized receiving core, and uh, they've been catching passes from Skinner all year long. I think that Kinsall may have a little bit more zip on the ball. It's tough to say, you know, watching just in warm-ups and practice. We'll see how that plays out today. Southeastern 2-2 two and two on the season, Northwestern 1-3, and three, the one win coming against Henderson State a couple of weeks ago. And it is. It's just a, a wonderful day for football out there right now. I mean, it, it really is nice. Uh, something then, if these two teams are, are fairly evenly matched, and it looks like they, they could be on paper in, in a lot of places, special teams may come in. Talk about Joel Carlos. I mean, he just does a fantastic job for the Storm. Well, Carlos, of course, all-conference performer, kicker and punter a year ago, and he is kind of an X factor and not just for his leg. They have uh, some special fakes that they occasionally dial up. He has some options uh, whenever he goes into that rugby-style punt look, and I know you've seen it before. So that is kind of an X factor. I think, though, the one thing that we could see play out in special teams, Jalen Sims, he's picked up a couple of returns in recent weeks. Whenever they see uh, that they're in an excellent position to perhaps get the ball around midfield, you may see Sims on a return and Sims may be one of the more explosive receivers in the whole conference. All right, then, Jay Lindley, the play-by-play voice for the Southeastern Savage Storm football team. Uh, Jay, if people want to watch and or listen to you today, how do they find you on the Internet? And, I mean, locally, uh, Mix 96-1, but... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's, uh, the funny thing is once it's on the Internet, it's everywhere. Just that's right. Like this right here. That's right. Uh, but, no, the easiest way is you just go to GoSoutheastern.com slash SD Sports Net. Uh, you can also follow the Go Southeastern uh, Facebook page. It will be broadcast there. And then the flagship Mix961.net, there's a big banner there. It says click here to watch Southeastern Athletics. One other thing to add in, you know, Kinsall getting to start quarterback. One thing that I will give him an advantage in today is against this Northwestern team today, he's not having to throw passes in Wendy Alvey, Alva <laughs> like he was last year. That's it's a true. little calmer here than it is uh, up north. So. It's, it is definitely that, – that, that's a factor. I yes. mean, you, you, you play – and we talked about this uh, four weeks ago when, when we were in Weatherford. That, that's a factor that you just have to uh, – there's no way you can practice it. No. You just have to be out there in, in both Weatherford and Alva. I mean, the wind does come sweeping down the plane. And certainly. And in that stadium, it's kind of a bowl, so it sweeps yeah. in – and across the field. So we'll see if uh, the accuracy may be a little bit better at home than it was in Alva a year ago. All right. Ken Saul gets the start. You heard it right here on Midwest Sports Saturday. Jay Lindley, Southeastern play-by-play voice. Thanks for thanks for joining me, and thanks for sitting next to me again. It's been a little while. It, it has been a while, and I have to say I'm highly impressed. I knew you were doing something. I, I've, <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. I haven't seen the behind-the-scenes. I'm impressed with what you got going on, Joey. All right. I appreciate it. We're just going to grow. We're just going to grow. It's big time, right? It's big time. It's big, big time. time. All right. Jay Lindley, and he'll be uh, he'll be on the internet as well. So let's uh, move on then. As uh, Jay has, well, you've got um, you've got game to call too. Yeah, I know yeah. I've seen the equipment up there too. You've got a lot going on. Uh, MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Division Two football rankings. Uh, Southern Arkansas, I mentioned this just a little bit earlier, Southern Arkansas at the top of our regional rankings now, 4-0, and had the win last week against Northwestern, 27-14 the final. Uh, they are on the road today taking on Oklahoma Baptist. It's Pitt State moving up from number three to number two, also 4-0 and on the year, defeated Nebraska Kearney last week, 30-17. to They're at Lindenwood today. The only other... Uh, undefeated team in the midwest sports.net regional footprint is washita and they defeated 
Uh, the Tigers defeated East Central 42 nothing last week at home today to take on Arkansas Tech. Number four, Northwest Missouri falling out of that top spot in our list as they were upset by Central Oklahoma 31-21 last Saturday. Try to right the ship against Emporia State at home this week. Number five, Fort Hayes State moving up one. Defeated Missouri Southern last week 55-20. to They get to take on that Central Oklahoma team and uh, the Broncos trying to get a second consecutive win. Actually, third consecutive win. This one could be an, an upset type as well and that one's going to be on the road at Hayes. Number six, Harding, 3-1 and one on the year. Defeated Oklahoma Baptist last week, 56-7. to seven. They're on the road against Arkansas Monticello, the team Southeastern defeated last week in Monticello. It's number seven, Chadron State, 3-1, and one, uh, taking on Western State today, coming off a win over Colorado Mesa. Eight, Missouri S&T defeated Tuskegee out of conference last week, 16-7, and they are taking on Southwest Baptist today. Central Oklahoma, we mentioned them, 2-2. Two and two. Lost the first two games, won the next two, trying to make it three state as they are at Fort Hayes State today. And then Central Missouri lost to Washburn last week, 2-2 two and two on the season, fell to the Ichabods 28-21. And they are at home today to take on the, the Missouri Southern Lions, the Mules, at home for that matchup. Well, another big game that took place last week was at or against Henderson State, Southwestern coming away with a big victory as the Bulldogs get the win. It was J.R. Omiji with the touchdown catch in the final minute to secure the victory for the Bulldogs. Southwestern's Haley Tucker had a chance to catch up with Omiji and talk about the game. I'm Haley Tucker for Midwest Sports Saturday, and I'm sitting down with Swasu football wide receiver J.R. Omiji. JR, thank you so much for taking the time to come out and talk with us today. Not a problem, not a problem. And I feel super honored. I mean, I'm getting to sit down and talk to the GAC Player of the Week, the guy that made the game-winning touchdown at Henderson State. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's not easy to go in and win at Henderson State. Not many GAC teams do that. Well, our coach has been telling us just going into the week that it's a big opportunity in front of us. We need to take advantage. So he said he was going to call plays in order to beat them, and that's what he did. And you've been to Arkadelphia twice already this year. Yeah. Talk about how long of a bus trip that is and just the mentality going into that. It's long. It's long. It's like, I'd say, about seven hours. And then we stop halfway, then we drive the rest of the way. So it's very stressful, but it's just something you got to get past. Yeah, just as a student athlete, you just got to get past that, right? Mm -hmm. And then individually, I mean, 220 yards on eight receptions, that's video game-like numbers. <laughs> I mean, seriously, JR, talk about that a little bit, how you found so much success. Obviously, I always planned on doing that, but I talked to the coaches, and they talked with me, and they said they were just going to call plays in order for us to win, and those were the plays he felt that we needed to take on. And then that last play, the, the play that mattered, the best play of the game, you know, how, was that drawn up for you? I mean, was that, I mean, I can't. Imagine it wasn't with yeah. how your game was going already. Was no that the play? Nah, no plays are just drawn up for someone, but I just so happened to get open, and the line did a good job of letting Casey have enough time to sit in the pocket, and he just let loose. And then this next week, going into ECU, that's that's a tough game too because you got to go on the bus, get off the bus, play a football game. I mean, talk about that a little bit and how it's a lot different from going and getting a night's rest in Arkadelphia. We've done this so many times, so it's just like second nature now. So really, he just tells us what to do. We're prepared for it. We take it on, and then it's on to the next. And then you all are 2-2 two and two right now in the season. ECU would be a really big win for you guys, especially in the conference. What is your mental game plan, mental set going into that game? Just listen to the coaches. That's <laughs> it. I mean, they tell you everything. It's not like it's rocket science. It's just they give you a task and you do it. And if you don't perform it, then the next man is going to do it. So that's okay. it. Well, thanks so much, JR, for coming out and mm -hmm. talking with us. Like I said, I'm super honored to hang out with you today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And I'm Haley Tucker for Midwest Sports Saturday. Thanks to Haley Tucker for sitting down with Mr. Omiji, and congratulations to Southwestern for the win last week. Also, special thanks to the Southwestern Sports Information Department. As this look on campus was brought to you by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate as he is running for the Oklahoma State Senate seat six. Well, we look over to volleyball right now, and let's give a rundown of our Division II regional rankings from the Midwest Sports.net rankings, bi-weekly rankings, so these may look and sound the same as 
they were last Saturday as well. There's one team, however, that remains undefeated in this Midwest region, and that's Washburn. The Ichabods, 18-0 and on the season. Nebraska Kearney, 18-1. and They're in the number two spot. It's number three, Central Oklahoma at 16-4. and Number four, Central Missouri. 14 and 4, Wayne State 13 and 4 out of the Northern Sun in at number 5. Number 6 is Rockhurst at 15 and 2, number 7 Henderson State at 16 and 3. Finally had that 14 game winning streak go by the wayside. They picked up again again last night though to to right the ship. Pittsburgh State at 15 and 4, the number 8 in our rankings, number 9 Northwest Missouri at 14 and 3. We'll talk about them just a little bit later on. And it's number 10 Southwestern Oklahoma at 12 and 4 right now. Well, there's so much going on here in Durant as we stop by Paul Laird Field today, Midwest Sports Saturday, presented by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. With a lot going on, of course, uh, it's not just football today. It's also rodeo. The Southeastern Rodeo is taking place today, wrapping up with the short go tonight as uh, the earlier rounds have taken place. Uh, One of the, the rodeo teams in the Midwest sports region that is in town today is Oklahoma Panhandle State. The OPSU Aggies came away with a victory in the first rodeo of the season. That was up at Colby. As the women's team won, the men's team came in second, and we had an opportunity to hear from assistant coach Shelby Weeder about their trip to Colby. Hi folks, Derek Barton, voice of the Panhandle State Aggies, and we are joined here by assistant rodeo coach for Panhandle State, Shelby Weeder, and I'm talking about this past weekend, three times you've won this rodeo to open up the season at Colby, Kansas. Talk about your performance at Colby this past weekend. Uh, Colby's always been good to us. I don't know, for some reason, we just seem to come out on fire. Um, This weekend was great. We actually didn't do any good in the breakaway, which is usually what holds us down. But the goat tying was probably the best watching event, and our girls were amazing. Well, you know, you've had uh, some new freshmen coming in, and you had a freshman that really stood out uh, this past week and took the all-around. Talk about both. Yeah. Uh, as a freshman, it's hard to come in and win your first college rodeo. It's hard to win a college rodeo at all as a freshman, and Bo proved that she was what we thought she was. Um, she's an outstanding competitor. She has done good at every level, and she proved that college is going to be no problem. Of course, the women's team went, won Colby this past weekend, but the guys came in second got to be important to kick off your fall season because you're limited rodeos in this fall before you take your fall break and stuff to get a good start on your season. Oh yeah, it's crucial to get off on the right foot and we did both ways. The men had an outstanding weekend. We maybe just didn't have all the right guys on the team. So we were not worried about that at all. Um, we got nine rodeos left, so we're going to keep going. Talk about this fall schedule. Of course, you had Colby, then you got a weekend off. What is your schedule for this fall run for the rodeo? Uh, we go every other weekend. We'll go to Durant the weekend after next, and then we have a weekend off at home, and then we go to Stillwater, have a weekend off, and then we go to Alva. And then it's done until springtime, and then yep, you kick then back up in April, right? February, February. Middle of February is our okay. first one. Okay. The other thing is, of course, uh, for people who don't know, two-time or back-to-back national championship men's team, seven-time national champion team, coming into a new season, how hard is it to come off of a great season like that and a great win and keep that momentum going? Uh, It's probably not as hard for us as it is for most people. Um, I kind of have gained Robert's standard to that as when we leave there, we start over. So for us, it's just another year of rodeo, and we're just going to keep doing what we can. You know, you you talked about yourself, Robert Atbauer, of course, a head coach. But, you know, the other thing that's amazed me since I've been down here at Panhandle State is the support you have from the community and people who volunteer to help out with this this college rodeo program, something that a lot of college rodeo programs don't have. Yeah, we're very lucky. We live in a special place, and we don't go without anything that we need. Um, The community is great, and we wouldn't want to have it any other way. Before we wrap things up, of course, the the main goal is to make the College National Finals Rodeo coming up in Casper later on this year, or in 2019, actually. Um, Talk about what it's like to be at that facility and compete at that rodeo, because it is probably one of the best rodeos in the entire country as far as being run and and efficiency. Oh, yeah, it's definitely one of the best rodeos you'll watch. Um, It's quick, it's fast, it's fun, and it's awesome to see kids that are going to school and rodeoing, and you know that they're putting in the time in the classroom and in the arena. Uh, there's really no place like it. I've spent my time at the NFR, and still college finals is my favorite. Well, of course, we are here at Panhandle State University in the Panhandle of Oklahoma. She's the assistant rodeo coach. I'm Derek Barton, and uh, if you ever get down here, come watch this rodeo program. It's second to none. 
This look on campus was brought to you by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate. Special thanks to the Panhandle State Sports Information Department, to Justine Gaskamp, and also to Danae Moore for getting us the video and getting to hear from assistant coach Shelby Weeder, uh, the Panhandle State rodeo team in action again today in Durant. Well, let's move back to volleyball for a moment. Our biweekly rankings look like this. In Division Three. Hendricks retains the top spot, 12-2 and two now on the season. Number two, Buena Vista. Number three, Coe at 13-5. and five. Number four, Washington, 9-3. and three. Number five, Grinnell at 9-10. and 10. And Grinnell, 9-5 and five just a week or so ago. Five consecutive losses, so uh, Pioneers, wanting to pick up a win as quickly as possible right the ship there as they've fallen below 500 on the year loris in at number six ten and seven the the record right now number seven dubuque at ten and six cornell in at number eight six and six westminster number nine nine and four and luther in at number ten at nine and nine on the season moving now to the naia and the volleyball rankings there according to the midwestsports.net regional rankings grandview Number one, fourteen and zero right now, still undefeated. Park is number two, sixteen and zero right now. We'll talk about the Pirates again here in just a moment. Number three, Columbia now at nineteen and one on the year, most wins in the NAI in the Midwest Sports .net regional footprint. Number four is Midland at fifteen and three. Number five, McPherson fourteen and one. Number six, Missouri Baptist at seventeen and two, and they just continue with that winning streak. It's number seven, Central Methodist at seventeen and two. Number eight, Hastings ten and four. Number nine, Clark in at eighteen and four, and number ten, Mount Mercy with a record of fourteen and seven on the year. Now we talked about Park, and number two in our regional rankings. Well, the NAI rankings probably the one that the Pirates would like to see right now and talk about the NAIA coaches rankings. They're in the top spot in the country, and they remain undefeated right now at sixteen and zero. The Park Sports Information Director Tyler Price had an opportunity to catch up with Coach Mike Telemontes and talk about his team in midseason. Season. All right, we're here with Park University volleyball coach Mike Telemontes. Uh, coach, the, the Pirates are number one in the nation, 15-0 um, overall. You know, what, what's been clicking for your team these past few weeks? Um, well, we were lucky because we have so many kids back from last year. Um, we bring six of our seven stars from last year back. And we picked up a phenomenal middle walker from Miami Dade. So the experience factor has been huge for us early on because we just kind of went in the training camp and just started. We didn't have to learn a lot of new things. And so it, and it showed. Like, we've been playing well. We've been playing at a high level. And it's been consistent a lot. So we're happy with our start, but I think it's a lot to do with our experience. Yeah, in, in your schedule, not many home events. You know, now you've got five straight. You know, what, what will it be like to be back home in front of your home crowd for you, for your staff and, and your team? Well, it's, it's our legs. We're really happy about that. Um, we just came off our Arkansas trip, so we're in the uh, bus for about 18 hours for two days. So we're happy to have five straight, happy to be at home, um, keeping our own beds, you know, going through our normal food. So we're happy about that, and we love playing in front of our crowd. So... That's always fun for us. We always have a big home crowd. Um, we've got Dig Think next week, so we're excited about that. We just, it's always a great event. So home is a lot of fun for us, and um, it's the end of the first eight weeks, so a lot of my kids are stressed about their finals, so we're glad we're not going to be traveling there. Well, that is Park Head Volleyball Coach Mike Telemontes. Thank you for your time, and good luck this week. Thank you very much. This look on campus brought to you by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate. I want to say thanks to Tyler Price, Sports Information Director at Park, for getting that to us and letting us get that to you today. Here on Midwest Sports Saturday, which is presented by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. Advance your career. Meet with educators and training facilities from across the region. That's going to take place in the month of November. That's at the Choctaw Career Expo 2018, and it will be on Wednesday, November 7th. It's going to take place at the Southeast Expo Center. That is in McAllister, Oklahoma. You can find out more by going to choctawcareers.com slash expo. Well, we mentioned things going on at Southeastern today, and uh, it's not just football. It is rodeo that is taking place today. Of course, there have been lots of tailgating things going on as well. The crowd is here, and we've been able to see across the way 
Uh, lots of activity taking place. There is also something special happening today, and that is the FCA Game Day, the Southeastern FCA Game Day, with the Southeastern Fellowship of Christian Athletes rep John Caps, who leads this and has it going on right now in Bloomer Sullivan Arena. We hope to have the opportunity to get to visit with John in one of our in-game looks a little bit later on, Midwest Sports Saturday, looking at things in-game here at Southeastern. We'll get a chance to visit with John or with Drew. Drew Beard, who is a former Southeastern quarterback, and he's also an FCA leader in the state of Oklahoma. The game day taking place right now. They've had some activity over there. Kids from around this area, all kinds of schools, all different FCA departments coming in. They get a chance to go, get together, spend some time together, and then watch a Southeastern football game on top of that. And, of course, kickoff for the Southeastern football game is at 2 o'clock today. So we hope to get to visit with either John or Drew in one of our in-game looks just a little bit later on. It's to football now, and we look at the NAI. We have our football rankings, the MidwestSports.net regional rankings that came out this week at the top spot. Morningside at 4 and 0 retains that number 1 position defeated Briar Cliff last week 56 to nothing the shutout uh, they are at Hastings today. It's number two, Northwestern Iowa, retaining that number two spot as the Red Rangers defeated Dakota Wesleyan last week, 41-13. They're at home today to take on Doan. Evangel stays at number three. Evangel, the only team with five wins in the NAIA right now, and especially within our regional footprint, defeated Culver Stockton last week, 2017, hanging on for the win. They are on the road at William Penn today. It's Kansas Wesleyan blowing out Ottawa last week. That was our only matchup of two teams that were in our regional rankings together and the Coyotes had uh, an opportunity to well just take advantage of things. Coyotes win 70-24. They are on the road at Bethany today. Avila in at number five moving up from number seven defeated St. Mary last week 67-28. That was on ESPN3 as the Eagles had an opportunity to shine in front of a national audience. They're on the road today at Southwestern. Number six Langston 2-1 2-1 and one on the year, defeated Bethany last week. Uh, they are on the road uh, today. Number seven, Midland, 3-1 and one on the year, moves up from number nine, defeated Concordia 35-7, and they are at home taking on Jamestown today. It's number eight, Benedictine, 3-1, and one, defeated Mid-America Nazarene last week. They're at Baker, rivalry game today. As Baker, number 10, moving into our rankings, and they defeated Graceland last week. They are hosting Benedictine, and I skipped number nine. Yeah, that's Grandview. Grandview at 2-1 and one of the year. They were idle last week. They take on Missouri Valley as they go on the road today well, with that matchup. Well, we are here. We are at the home of Southeastern and the Savage Storm taking on the Northwestern Rangers today. Sports Information Director Eric Scott from Northwestern had an opportunity to catch up with the head coach of the Rangers, Matt Walters, as Coach Walters talks about his team and is looking for it to continue to improve. I'm Eric Scott. I'm here with head football coach Matt Walter. Uh, coach, uh, let's just kind of do a little overview of the season. We're 1-3 and three this season. Uh, we've had an opportunity uh, in each contest this year, 13 point being our biggest difference, and that was only late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, what are some of your general thoughts so far this season? Well, we're not where we want to be. Uh, we got to keep getting better with each practice and each uh, week um, to get to where we want to be. So it's been uh, the, some of those games, those close games, are disappointing when you lose them. Uh, won a close game here at home. That was, uh, you know, uh, a great performance for us. But at the end of the day, we got to still get better and, uh, you know, win those close contests by making the plays that need to be made and executing and being consistent. In those close contests, of course, we had at that time number four or number 24, Washita Baptist. Now they're up to the top 10 in the nation. Yeah. Um, last week, we had uh, Southern Arkansas, and now they've jumped into the top 20. Yep. You know, so it, two of the two of those uh, three losses have been against really good teams. You know, and we we put up some numbers against those teams as well. You know, especially kind of on the out the outside with the receiving court with the receivers of guys like Gavin Gardner and about two hundred yard games, yeah. things like that. Talk about the ex. What, you know, yeah, the execution may have been lacking, but we've also had some execution for ourselves in those opportunities. Yeah, I think it just comes down to protecting the football and being consistent, and being able to sustain drives in order to um, you know score you know more. I mean, basically, at the end of the day, you know, win, win by scoring more points, right? Uh, but 
you know, that's where we're at, and that's that's what we got to work on is being more consistent. I mean, I, it's it's pretty simple once you break it down. It's just uh, you got to make plays and be consistent with what you're doing and execute the game plan. Uh, one thing that's really improved this year is the defense on how well they've been playing. We've got some guys that are, you know, tops in the nations after week four as far as uh, tackles in Dakota Driscoll, 55, leading the conference as well. It's number two in the nation. Uh, Jimmy Pace is tied for the conference lead with four sacks. You know, he's up there in the top, uh, top rankings in the nation as well. Uh, talk, talk about some of those guys. Obviously, Mo Wright. Everybody knows about Mo Wright around the league. But listen, you know, talk about some of those guys and what they mean to the defense. Well, they, I mean, they've been playing at a very high level, again, with high motors and high intensity, and that's been uh, that's been the key to their success and, and their improvement each week is coming out to practice that way, coming out to practice with intensity and with purpose and, and getting better with each practice. So I'm really proud of those guys and, and uh, what they've been doing and, and how they've been able to uh, improve from week to week uh, to, to get us in games and keep us in games. You know, when the offense isn't, isn't performing as well as it should, you know, defense is definitely picking it up, picking up the the slack there. So, um, again, really proud of those guys and, and um, impressed with how we're how we're proceeding. Uh, talk about uh, kind of looking for in this season. I know the coach you never want to look for, but we, uh, you know, kind of going forward, we've got some of our uh, I don't want to say weaker opponents, but we got some of the opponents that uh, we match up really, really well against. You know, we've already got that really tough part of the schedule out of the way. You know, what What do we need to do going forward? Well, first off, I mean, I think the league as a whole, each game or each team is getting better. Um, and you can see it from around the league, uh, just with the contest being so tight and, and how you can tell everybody's really improved uh, what they're doing with their programs. So, um, you know, just looking forward to the Southeastern game and, and getting up, maybe not travel eight or nine hours every time, you know. So that's the biggest thing to look forward to is, try, you know, the travel Lightens up a little bit. We got our, our two longest trips out of the way um, already, so that's a good thing. And then uh, you know, keep progressing as we move forward, uh, and you know, hopefully, uh, put it together, put put full four quarters together, which we haven't done yet, and uh, be, be able to come out on top of a few of these. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, today, Coach. And thank you. This look on campus is brought to you by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate as Arnold Bourne running for Oklahoma State Senate in the 6th District. And as we say thank you also to Eric Scott, Sports Information Director at Northwestern, and thanks to Coach Walter for spending some time with us today here on Midwest Sports Saturday presented by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. And I am joined now by another southeastern person. We're going back and forth between our northwestern and southeastern looks here, different parts of the state, and little little red, little blue, back and forth here. You're familiar with that blue, though, right? Yes, very familiar with the blue. <laughs> this is Katie Webb, and she is a senior on the southeastern Savage Storm basketball team. And, Katie, I'm really thankful, by the way, for you taking some time with us today here on Midwest Sports Saturday. Of it's not quite basketball time yet, but I know that you've been in the gym already and you guys have been getting ready for the season. It's not that far away. It's not that far away. Um, our first practice is in about two weeks. Um, so we've been working hard for about six weeks now, just ready to get rolling. Okay, now for you in particular, I imagine that it's going to feel really good to get back on the court as you played in nine games last year and then your season was cut short very untimely due to an injury. Talk about what it means to get back out there on the court. Um, you know, it was really hard having to you know sit on the sidelines, but I was able to learn a lot about you know leadership and watching them and being able to help them from the sidelines, but actually being on the court again is going to feel really good because you know I'd rather be a part of things physically than just on the sidelines encouraging. Well, and and you get to, you know you get to coach some too from the sidelines. Now you get to take that experience back out on the court, yeah. knowing what it means and and how to coach them up like that. Mm -hmm. Well, Katie is one of those players that she's kind of a hybrid, I, I would say. I've, I've had the opportunity to call uh, Katie's games with Southeastern before. And 5'10 player, you play as a guard, you play as a wing, but you can move people around on the inside yeah. as well. You're a difficult person to guard with that kind of versatility. Which place do you like playing the most, inside, outside what? Um, well, really the place that I like the best is mid-range. That's where I've grown up, you know. A lot of girls don't know how to shoot a really good jump shot. So uh, it just depends on what kind of player guards me. If you know a smaller player guards me, I'm going to go inside and 
try to bang around or if a big person's on me, you know, pull them out and take it. Well, and that's something, too, that, that I want to mention. I'm glad you said that. The mid-range game sometimes seems like it's a lost art. Yeah. But, it, I mean, that's really where you can have a field day as uh, you're able to make the shots from anywhere to 10 to 17 feet right mm-hmm. there on either side on the elbow there, put those shots and, and drain them. It, it's, it's a big deal. As you were shooting last year, prior to the injury, right at 50% from the field, right at 44% from outside the arc, too. So you're a tough one to guard. Yeah, you know, I just try to work hard all the time and really, you know, evolve my game rather than just being one-dimensional. This year coming in, Southeastern, of course, uh, a part of the Great American Conference, and and the conference seems to get more and more parity as it goes along, but it's also an issue within the conference that uh, a rising tide raises all ships. And and so this is a conference not only that, that seems to be uh, fairly even throughout, but it just gets stronger. Yeah, and you know, with those top teams that have won the conference before, Harding, Tech, Swasu, you know, we go out there and we compete with them every game. Uh, you know, anybody can win on any, any given night, it seems like, in our conference. So, you know, we start out the year with a clean slate. We're not worried about who won it last year or the year before. You know, we just want to go out there and win every game and compete as hard as we can. One more opportunity for sure coming into this season as you'll be about out there on the court. Katie Webb, I, I, again, I hate to say guard, I hate to say forward because then I'll, mis, I'll misname you for whatever game it happens to be. What are we going to see from the Storm this year? Um, you know, we got quite a few freshmen coming in this year because we lost a few seniors, but, um, you know, we should see some really good shootings. Uh, we've been focusing on defense a lot. Uh, you know, we just want to get back to the high-intensity play that, uh, Southeastern's known for, you know, going after all the loose balls, the movement on offense. Uh, we're just really excited about, you know, embracing the new ones while also trying to integrate them into what we already do. And with Coach Darren Grover, we know that uh, we're likely to see any number that's a double digit. Uh, of players that yeah. see time on the court. Coach Grover known for uh, definitely making sure that there is a, a wide variety of players that see time. Yeah. Um, that's one of the main things that attracted me to Southeastern was um, he gives every player a chance whenever they come in. You know, as a freshman, everybody gets equal opportunity to play. You just have to go out there and show what you can do. I mean, coming back for my fourth year, I'm not guaranteed a starting spot. If there's a freshman that's better than me, you know, good for him. I'm going to compete and try to beat them out. All right. Well, we wish you well, and and we're we're pushed for you to get that. Uh, Katie Webb, a senior on this Southeastern Savage Storm team, thank you for joining us today on Midwest Sports Saturday. Thank you so much. Well, as uh, we have basketball to talk about, and we will be talking more about basketball here in the future, football going on today, and we heard from Coach Bo Atterbury. He talked about the win last week in Monticello and how his team was able to overcome a few things to get to that point as he looks forward to today. Uh, yeah, came off a big win for us on the road uh, in, in Monticello. Uh, had some weather issues, a lightning delay, and was real proud of the way the guys handled that and uh, stuck together and were able to finish the game uh, again on the road in, in some uh, inclement weather. Uh, moving forward, we're currently sitting at 2-2. Two and two. We have a tough opponent in uh, northwestern Oklahoma State this weekend at 2 p.m., Paul Laird Field. We're excited about another opportunity in an extremely tough Great American Conference game. Um, it should be a good one. Savage Storm again come in 2-2 two and two on the season after the victory, and Coach Atterbury's team getting ready to try to defend, to defend this home field here at Paul Laird on the campus of Southeastern Oklahoma State University. That look on campus was brought to you by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate. Well, I am joined right now by the play-by-play voice of the Northwestern Rangers. Really excited, Matt, that, that you're taking the time to be with us today and, and thankful that you stopped by. Of course, you have some work to do a little bit later on. I I promise I'll let you get to that. In the meantime, though, Northwestern 1-3 and three on the year, got the victory against Henderson State, fell last week against a very tough Southern Arkansas team. Talk about the Rangers and where they are now. Well, I think the Rangers have not had the start to the season that they were hoping to have. I think uh, the, the feeling coming into this season was that they had a great, uh, great group of uh, players on campus for spring ball. They had a very high-impact and exciting uh, start to the 
uh, to the fall, and then when they got out there for game one, of course, as you look at the schedule, it was a pretty tough slate of games for Northwestern to start the season. Of course, Washita Baptist right up there at the top. You just mentioned Southern Arkansas. We've already had two teams that are in the top 20 in the nation uh, on our schedule. Monticello, who has been a terrific opponent for Ranger football since uh, we've made the move to Division II. We've always had good, uh, close games with them. They're typically high scoring this year, not quite so much. And then, of course, Henderson, who is never going to be a bad team, especially in this conference. Henderson does great things, has a great program, and we were very, uh, very fortunate, very proud to have picked up that win against them. So I think Ranger football isn't where they'd like to be, but given the strength of that schedule in the opening four weeks, um, I think that they there are a few positives that they can take away. And, and that's the thing about the schedule, too. When, when the schedule is, is front-loaded, like it like it has been for Northwestern this year. And, and you see sometimes teams, if you're able to get past the first couple of games knowing how, how tough those teams are, it's, it's good if you can't get past those two teams or three teams or four teams and now you're looking down the barrel of one and three, it's a challenge, really, I think, for the coaching staff and for the team itself to, to, to rise the occasion and, and keep the season going. I think there's every possibility from a coaching standpoint, I would imagine, that uh, coaches are concerned at least to some extent about losing the team too early in the season. Uh, I was concerned about that when I looked at the schedule and thought, oh, man, if we, if we ended up with a 1-3, a, a a and 0-4 oh start, it, it could be a rough year. Will these guys continue to fight and hang together? I think what's happened for Northwestern it has been fortunate. I talked about a few things, that, positives that they could take away from a, a one-win, three-loss season thus far. We played Washita uh, within eight points, so one score. We mm-hmm. were driving it uh, late in the fourth quarter with a chance to tie the ball game. Same thing uh, with Arkansas Monticello late in that game. Uh, in, a, in a good battle between the two teams, we had a, an opportunity driving to score and, uh, and tie, tie the ball game. Against Southeastern, we came out and, uh, or excuse me, against Southern Arc, we came out and played really, really well in the in the first quarter. We had a tremendous defensive effort. Our our defense a week ago had two stops in the red zone, uh, one from the 17 yard line, one from the two yard line, and and there was a lot of momentum. Uh, credit to Southern Arkansas in the very late stages of the game, they made made plays, uh, did what they needed to, and secured that victory. It was a little bit of a closer game I think maybe than the scoreboard would show and it was still a relatively close game in terms of the scoreboard so I think that the Rangers have felt like they have been within the grasp of having a three and one or even potentially a four and oh start and that has really been I think inspirational for our guys well they have a lot of quality players on on the team out there so let's start with the offensive side of the ball Jacob Payton as he just continues to to rack up yardage as he's the number one rusher in the GAC and I believe he's he is in the top 10 in the NCAA division two in in rushing yards per game you look at him size-wise, he's not really a, a big guy. He just finds a way to push the ball down the field. Uh, dynamite comes in small packages. <laughs> Jake Payton is, an number one, as a, as, a, as a young man, as a person, he is an incredible young man. Comes from a great family. He's got a great heart. He, he's absolutely an amazing kid. And it, when he puts that helmet on, he just transforms. He's a north-south runner. He is a violent runner is the way I like to describe him. Just doesn't shy away from contact, finds holes. And uh, we saw a couple of games ago, Jake has got some some very good speed as he broke out for a 75-yard dash that uh, ended two yards short of a touchdown. But incredible speed to get down the field against Henderson. Uh, unfortunately, in that game, he suffered an injury that he is still rehabbing. We don't expect to see him today. But his stats through three games, enough to keep him in the top ten in the nation. Uh, and and, a, and a, he is expected back hopefully next week. We'll see. But uh, a kid that is on pace to have a phenomenal season. Well, and, and with that on the offensive side, you know, you, you can move the ball some. Defense, though, Northwestern in recent years has just had – player after player that steps up and finds a way to garner not only conference but national attention with play on the defensive side of the ball. It's been defensive linemen in recent years. A couple of linebackers now, though, that have stepped up. Maurice Wright coming in, getting some preseason accolades, and and from what he did last year coming into this year, 
Expect a lot from him. Dakota Driscoll also has uh, stepped up and, and really made some noise on the defense side. Absolutely. Maurice was a guy that we've had our eye on since day one. He came in and started on that defensive unit as a true freshman. And the, the tag on Maurice around, uh, around our campus and around the, the football program has been that he is such a phenomenal athlete. He could play and challenge for a starting role at any position on the field. <laughs> uh, just an absolutely incredible athlete, instinctual, knows for the ball, uh, brilliant defensive player, uh, and just puts himself in, in positions to, to make tackles, to break up plays that most people would just be shocked to see the amount of distance he covers in the course of a game. Dakota Driscoll, another one of those you mentioned. Dakota was an amazing linebacker for us last year and was up and coming. We've had some talented linebackers. This year, as he gets his chance in the spotlight, he has taken advantage of it. He's become a force to be reckoned with. And I think you're right, Joey. They do continue a, a good tradition of solid defensive players for Northwestern. A couple of years ago, a young man named Joby St. Fleur was uh, just recently <laughs> picked up by the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, Jimmy Pace this year, we were always kind of wondering, you know, you have an NFL caliber player who's going to take his place. Well, Jimmy Pace has come up with two sacks in each of the last two games and as a defensive end and, and looks to be just continuing to reach his peak. So a, a lot of good going for that defense right now. I watched St. Fleur a couple of years back get four sacks against this southeastern football team and so just again amazing defensive players well when you you're getting ready to call the game today of course this is matt adair the play-by-play -play voice of northwestern you get ready to call the game today what do you expect from this contest i, I as i look at these two teams i think that there is going to be a really good game you mentioned in the in the previous segment uh, going back and forth between talking about south uh, southeastern and northwestern i think we may be in for a back and forth game today two very good teams two uh, two teams that i think have advantages in some areas and, and good solid matchups in others uh, so this could be a, a really intense game and a great game to watch. I, I'm certainly hoping to see uh, one of those games that keeps you on the edge of your seat because, to be honest, uh, beating Southeastern is still something that, uh, that Northwestern would consider a great accomplishment. It's a very <laughs> solid football team, uh, a tremendous competitor for the conference and representative of Oklahoma. So being here, uh, always a tough place to play, but uh, I think we're optimistic about what we have the potential to do and very realistic about what we've seen that you guys have been able to do. Now, I, I like that then from, from what you just said, what we – uh, what we are able to do. And, and I was wondering if that might show up anywhere at all because uh, Matt is also an instructor of mass communications at Northwestern Oklahoma State University, one of the advisors up there. How long have you been with the Northwestern program? I have been working at Northwestern for 11 years. Uh, I'm a Northwestern graduate uh, twice uh, with my bachelor's degree and master's degree from there. Uh, six years now specifically in the communications program as, a, as an instructor of mass communication. Uh, so I, there is absolutely no doubt it is a, it is a we and them we type of broadcast. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, for small regional radio That's in our little right. Alba That's community, right. I think it uh, – it is either understood or at least graciously accepted. No, that's that is fine, and that's I I think that's good. I think that lends to what broadcasters can and should be doing at MidwestSports.net. And by the way, Midwest Sports Saturday presented today by Choctaw Career Expo 2018. But with MidwestSports.net and and our focus being on on the small colleges, on the high school sports within this regional area and within this footprint. I think that's something that does make it fun. You want your broadcast to be enjoyable, and, and you want the people who listen to it to enjoy it, win or lose. Well, and from a fan's perspective, you know, small colleges, like you mentioned, there, there aren't a lot of uh, educational options in primarily right there in northwest Oklahoma. you got some in the Panhandle and some a little further east uh, over by Enid, but right there, it's just us. So uh, as a collective, our, our group of fans, our group of followers, the people who support the Rangers and Ranger football, it has always been a sense of pride for the university to feel like our fans talk about our athletic programs in terms of we, as in all of us Rangers, right. uh, as opposed to, well, how are they doing or how are the Rangers this year? It's a, it's a we thing. And one last question, as uh, Northwestern, one of the Division II teams that, that was part of the, the most recent wave of programs making the transition from NAI to Division II on, on, an, on a national affiliation level, you were part of that change, and uh, how, how did something like that affect the campus moving up? It, it, it's definitely been an effect. Um, it has made our athletics program that was always a staple at Northwestern, a piece of what we do, a part of our student life and culture, both for student athletes and non-student athletes. But I think it's really encouraged the, the athletic program to reach out more 
uh, more broadly in terms of its ability to recruit. Uh, the, the NCAA brand and logo is a certainly powerful uh, motivator for student athletes and non-student athletes, but also in the community. Uh, with the NCAA's programs on community service and things like that, I think it gives our fans, our community, uh, more of an opportunity to not only watch some of these young men and women play on the court, on the field, at the pitch, but also to interact with them while they do some community service projects and raise money for charitable organizations. So I, I see it as being a tremendously positive thing and something that Northwestern took a great deal of time in considering before they made the decision and felt like there were just so many things that, that it would achieve for us and help us to achieve ourselves. It was a very, very well accepted decision when it came time. All right. This is Matt Adair, play-by-play voice of the Northwestern Rangers. And, Matt, where can the folks find you if they want to hear your broadcast and, and your vantage on today's game? Uh, we are on uh, on the radio at 105.7 if you're close to Alva. If you are anywhere else in the world, you can listen to us through, uh, through the Internet, alvaradio.com. Just click on the Listen Live link. It's Matt Adair, and thank you, Matt, for taking some time with us today. I appreciate you being on Midwest Sports Saturday. Joey, thank you for inviting me. Well, we have a game that's going to kick off in about two hours. In the meantime, though, we've been talking about football here. We've talked about rodeo. Let's talk about a little bit of volleyball. Northwestern Missouri. Northwest Missouri has now won nine consecutive matches. Now, we had them in our regional rankings as well. They've moved into our top ten in Division Two. The Bearcats, winners of nine consecutive matches, we had a chance to hear from Coach Amy Worth, and she talked about the fact that it's experience that has made a difference for her team. Um, I think we have a bigger senior class, and I think when you have, a, you know, a more uh, experienced leadership piece, we had two seniors in that year, and, and this year we have, you know, four. And from the standpoint of having two more that have had that much more experience underneath them, I think that's a positive, and, and they're great leaders. Um, they know how to stabilize us when it comes to their play, uh, first and foremost. Um, but then they're able to lead, you know, when it comes to. Uh, just their thoughts on how we're acting and, and how we need to push through things. So I, I think the leadership has a lot to do with it. Um, I would say this team is more collectively hungry um, because we've learned from those lessons and, and we're continuing to build the program to, to be a championship program. And um, I just feel like that leadership is helping us in those times um, where maybe we didn't have so much depth um, leadership wise in, in the 16 team. How does Special thanks to the Sports Information Department at Northwest Missouri and Colin McDonough, the Sports Information Director there, for helping us and bringing us that video from Coach Worth. Again, the Bearcats uh, winners last night over Fort Hay State in a four-set match. They get to take on Nebraska Kearney today. The the bulk of the schedule there at home now in a four-game or a four-match home stretch for the Bearcats but it's a challenging portion of the MIAA schedule. Midwest Sports Saturday is presented today by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. If you need some coaching on your job search, well, check it out. At the Choctaw Career Expo 2018, you can meet with career coaches for assistance with resume development, how to make a positive impression on employers, and learn some new interviewing skills. That's at the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. It'll be Wednesday, November 7th, 2018, and it's going to be at the Southeast Expo Center in McAllister, Oklahoma. So wherever you are, find your Google map and go ahead and pinpoint where McAllister is, and you can make that trip on Wednesday, November 7th. To find out more, go to choctawcareers.com slash expo. Well, let's look through our football schedule for today, specifically specifically within the Midwest Sports Regional Ranking. Division two, number one, Southern Arkansas, on the road taking on Oklahoma Baptist, Southern Arkansas, 59.6% in third down conversion rate, a plus eight turnover margin, and Karantz Higgins has 140 yards of receiving per game. That's number one in Division two for the Mule Riders there. And they're taking in on the road at Shawnee, Oklahoma. Number two, Pitt State at Lindenwood today. Pitt State's defense giving up only 11 points per game. That's tops in the MIAA. Well, Lindenwood's offense is putting up 38.8 points per game. That's tops in the MIAA. Something is going to give today at Lindenwood. It's number three, Washita hosting Arkansas Tech. Washita scoring defense allowing just a little bit more than what Pitt State's is, 11.2 points per game. That's tops in the GAC. 
And the defense for the Tigers, 10 sacks, 8 interceptions on the year. Emporia State on the road at number 4, Northwest Missouri. Northwest Missouri lost to UCO last week, 31-21. Now, prior to last season, in which the Northwest Missouri Bearcats lost three of the final four games of the season, the last time the Bearcats lost two in a row, in the same season was back in 2001. So you have to think that Northwest Missouri uh, looking to right the ship today against Emporia State. This may be the opponent too because the Bearcats all time against the Hornets 32-2, 32-2, and two, this being the 35th meeting today. A battle of ranked teams within the MidwestSports.net regional uh, footprint. Number nine, Central Oklahoma on the road at Fort Hayes State today. It's homecoming in Hayes, and if you're there, there are going to be fireworks after the game. Both of these teams have won two straight and looking to make it a third. Number six, Harding at Arkansas Monticello. Harding giving up just three penalties, or committing, excuse me, just three penalties per game just three had one back in week one that's number one in division two and also with that ground game 338.1 rushing yards per game that's second in division two it's number seven chadron state hosting western state today homecoming in chadron also and they're going to be recognizing the 1958 team that went undefeated so homecoming there in Chadron. Number eight, Missouri S&T at Southwest Baptist today. S&T Braxton Graham with 6.2 receptions per game. That's number one in the GLVC. It's number 10, Central Missouri hosting Missouri Southern today. Central Missouri, 534.3 yards of total offense per game, and that is good enough to be the fourth best in Division Two. Also, Northwestern at Southeastern today. Jacob Payton, we talked about him. as uh, Through three games, he's had 136 rushing yards per game. That's tops in the GAC. It's Henderson State at Southern Nazarene today. Richard Stametti, 305 passing yards per game, tops in the conference. Going up against Southern Nazarene's defense, it's giving up only 89 passing yards per game. Another game where something has to give. Also in Division Two, it's Southwestern Oklahoma at East Central, Missouri, or excuse me, Minnesota Moorhead at Upper Iowa, Washburn at Missouri Western, Lincoln at Indianapolis, William Jewell at Truman State, Bemidji State at Wayne State, and Nebraska Kearney at Northeastern State. And Northeastern State also honoring a team from 1958, the 1958 National Championship team. In Division Three, Suwanee at Hendricks, Buena Vista at Central today, Chicago at Cornell, Dubuque at Loris, Nebraska Wesleyan at Coe. For Nebraska Wesleyan, it's the 1,000th game in school history. First ever trip, by the way, to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, to take on Coe at Coe today. Ripon at Grinnell, Simpson at Wartburg, Greenville at Westminster, and Washington at North Park. Washington soccer coach, Men's soccer coach Joe Clark coaching his 400th game today at Washington. He has well more than 700 games under his belt. In the NAI, number one Morningside at Hastings. Morningside putting up 51.5 points per game. That's fourth in the NAI. It's Doan at number two, Northwestern Iowa. Number three, Evangel at William Penn. Number four, Kansas Wesleyan at Bethany. Kansas Wesleyan putting up 59.3 points per game. Number one in the NAIA, DeMarco Pruitt, also with 134 rushing yards per game. Number five, Avila at Southwestern. Number six, Langston hosting Wayland Baptist. It's Benedictine and Baker. A rivalry matchup going on in Baldwin City, and it's homecoming for Baker as well. Number nine, Grandview at Missouri Valley. It's Oklahoma Panhandle taking on Lyon. The Aggies have won two straight at home, and now on the road for three consecutive games are Oklahoma Panhandle. And Concordia at Dort today. Dakota Wesleyan at Briar Cliff. Cliff, excuse me. Graceland on the road taking on Central Methodist. St. Ambrose at St. Francis today. Waldorf at Mayville State. Friends at McPherson. Friends trying to pick up the first win of the season. Peru State at Mid-American Nazarene. Sterling at St. Mary. And Tabor at Ottawa. And that is a look at the small colleges within the MidwestSports.net regional footprint. Midwest Sports Saturday presented again today by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. And we do want to say thank you again to the Choctaw Career Expo Take a chance, meet some employers who are hiring. Bring your resume and be prepared for on-site interviews. Discover future career opportunities in southeastern Oklahoma. That's at the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. It's going to take place at the Southeast Expo Center in McAllister. If you want to find out more, visit ChoctawCareers.com expo. 
We're winding things down here from Durant. It's been a fun show today. I want to say thanks to all of our guests, to Jay Lindley, to Katie Webb, to Matt Adair. Special thanks to Dylan Perry, who has been operating the board today, our director, technical director, audio guy, and pretty much just everything we've needed him to be. Really grateful to have Dylan back with me today. Also, special thanks to Courtney Johnson and to... Philip Morse, I want to say thanks to Mike Holmes and the folks who have been giving us some technical support today, David Anderson as well. Appreciate all of the help that they give us. Thanks to my family for allowing me to get to be with you each and every Saturday. So it's Southeastern hosting Northwestern today, a cross-state rivalry matchup within the Great American Conference. Kickoff is at 2, so be looking for that. And we'll also have some in-game spots as well for Midwest Sports, or Midwest Sports Saturday. And also thanks to Arnold Bourne for uh, helping us to bring you looks around the campuses of the MidwestSports.net area. For Dylan Perry... I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching Midwest Sports Saturday today. God bless you all. Have a great day.